Welcome back to Mornings on Two. A live look here at the White House. We see that the flag has been lowered to honor California Senator Dianne Feinstein, who's died at the age of 90. You certainly are waiting to see President Biden speak about someone he has had a long political and personal relationship with. It is among the many pieces we are putting together, certainly as the Bay Area, feeling a special significance in this loss. Hello, everyone. I'm Andre Senior, along with Gossip McKillian. And today's Friday, September 29th. Of course, we're following the sudden passing of Senator Dianne Feinstein. We know she's battled me several me uh, health issues over the last uh, several months, uh, including shingles back in February. And she also had some health issues over the years. This morning, the Bay Area, the state, and the whole country is remembering Senator Feinstein. She died last night at the age of 90. The trailblazing leader was the longest serving woman in the U.S. Senate. She was elected to the Senate in 1992, but her political career dates back much earlier than that to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. And she became mayor in 1978 after the assassination of San Francisco Mayor George Moscone. Joining us now, we welcome former U.S. Representative Jackie Spear to our coverage. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I'd like your initial thoughts upon your learning of, of Ms. Feinstein's death. Well, it's certainly a very sad day for all of us here in the Bay Area, in California, and truly across the nation, because Senator Feinstein really was a first among firsts. As you pointed out, she was the first uh, female member of uh, the Board of Supervisors, the first mayor. She was the first U.S. senator from California who was female, the first Judiciary Committee chair who was female, the first Intelligence Committee chair who was female. And in all of those decades, she conducted herself in a manner that was really remarkable, both in terms of her ability to walk and work across the aisle, uh, but also in her ability to get really substantive legislation passed and signed into law. So um, a great loss for all of us, whether it was um, saving the local cable cars in San Francisco, uh, or Lake Tahoe, or creating a national monument of um, the Mojave Desert, uh, or if it was, in fact, after the mass shooting at California, 101 California, her ability to get a uh, assault weapon ban passed and signed into law that was in effect in the United States for 10 years uh, was a remarkable achievement. Uh, I can't say enough about her as a, an individual. She was a great mentor to me. Uh, we shared a, a number of experiences um, that were both sad and tragic. Uh, mm -hmm. I was shot in Guyana 10 days before um, she saw the death and assassination of uh, then Mayor George Moscone and Harvey Milk. Uh, we both lost our husbands uh, early in life in our political careers. So we had uh, much to share, which included, I might add, um, tips about um, uh, beauty. She once said to me, where did you get that lipstick? And um, I told her and actually got her a tube so that she could wear the same color. Um, so she was, um, she was just a remarkable woman. I, I wonder, uh, when you talked about her firsts, and, and they're very, a very impressive list of firsts, and some, those things are not, not easily accomplishable, especially for anyone, but she was able to accomplish these things uh, in her life. I wonder, when you looked up to her, uh, how she inspired you and in your career and in your life. I want to hear a little bit about that from you. Well, you know, she inspired me in part by losing and coming back. And that happened to me a number of times in my career. I mean, she lost the first time she ran for mayor. She lost when she ran for governor. Uh, and yet she rebounded. And it's a great lesson to all of us in politics that it's not over till it's over. And uh, in fact, you can come back and be um, successful. I think what I learned most from her was that if you're doing something righteous, uh, even if you have people who are opposed to you, you've got to keep pressing forward. And certainly her work on the torture report on the Senate Intelligence, Intelligence Committee was one of those um, great uh, firsts that she did in which you know, she exposed what was a, a horrible uh, product of the military in terms of how they dealt with POWs. And made it um, impossible for us to continue to do that. I know that your relationship went far beyond politics. You, t you told the story about the lipstick, which is something 
I, I and probably most of our viewers have never heard before. Can I ask you, how did you watch the coverage of Senator Feinstein in the past several years. You have this intense personal bond. There were a lot of people speculating about what was happening in her life, personally, politically, and, and otherwise. Talk to me about that aspect of the senator's life and career. Well, certainly with Dick Blum's passing, that was a huge loss to her. And um, they were a great partnership. Um, that um, spanned, I think, almost 40 years. And I, I would say that the way that some of my colleagues treated her in her last months in office were, were really despicable. I mean, she was intent on returning to the Senate. She was intent on being able to vote on judicial nominees. She did come back. Uh, probably against her doctor's wishes, uh, but she was going to finish as she started. She wanted to complete her term. Um, now, she wasn't able to do that, but she did go back. She did uh, assist in making sure there were more judicial nominations by President Biden that were successfully pursued. So uh, I think that she did it her way. And I, I, when I think of her, I, I think of her, her steely, presence. I mean, she was um, her own person and no one was going to push her around. Yeah, I, I, I wonder how uh, the perception has changed here uh, in Congress. I remember Nancy Pelosi, uh, when she was, uh, when Senator Feinstein was dealing with her health, health issues, went on TV and said, you know what, if she were a man, people wouldn't be saying these things about her, forcing her uh, to retire. Uh, what does that really say about, about Diane Feinstein's kind of, kind of grit in terms of uh, standing up uh, to uh, 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 Congress, which is mostly uh, men. So, Speaker Merida Pelosi was absolutely right. Um, it was misogyny. Uh, when you had Senator Mark Kirk from Illinois, who suffered um, a stroke, he was out of the Senate for over a year, and there were no calls for him to resign or retire. Um, another a senator from South Dakota, similar out for eight or nine months. And yet she was out for two months, and we had Democrats who were actually mm -hmm. suggesting that mm -hmm. she resign. And I think it had more to do with political ambition than with any appreciation for um, her, what she was going through or her commitment to return to the Senate. All right. Former U.S. Representative Jackie Spear will note that you're, you're now running for the Board of Supervisors there in San Mateo County. Of course, Senator Feinstein started mm -hmm. at the Board of Supervisors yeah. in San mm -hmm. Francisco. I think there's something so special about, you know, serving your hometown, essentially. I appreciate uh, I your agree. time. It's good to be able to see you again. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.